what's crapping in youtube so listen been uh, been gone a while but uh, i'm back at her here we're gonna start a video up on putting some brakes on my 1969 dodge charger these brakes are from bear and so there was a little bit of growing pains with figuring out how to do this all right and i'm going to kind of show you a few things that you might want to know just in case you decide to go the same route so first off my car is a drum brake car b body 1969 charger drum brake on all four corners so these are the spindles here that were on the front and you're going to be able to see a big difference between these and these so these are drum brake spindles now you can get this kit with drum brake spindles but i wanted to go with disc brake spindles because one of these is actually i think bent so it was burning out bearings and i couldn't get it to seat properly so anyhow this is the classic industries i think it's 64 to or sorry, 62 to 74 B and E body spindle with disc brake kit. I bought these a while ago. And one thing you got to be really, um, I guess, sure of is the diameter of this is actually a heck of a lot bigger than the factory disc brake spindles that would have came with the car. So you actually have to order the right hubs. So make sure if you are ordering from Bear that you get the right hubs because I went through that. I got the wrong hubs. It's my bad. Bear was awesome. They worked with me and they made it uh, made it work. Now, another thing. Um, I don't know if these spindles were a bad casting or what, but these brackets here, I don't know if you can see, but we've had to modify them because they didn't fit the profile of the spindle. And they weren't they weren't going on. So we actually had to wallow out a hole a tiny bit. And we also had to take this profile down, grind this down on the actual spindle as well as the bracket to make it work. You can see that it has been grind, grind, uh, grinded, I can't words, holy smokes, grinded down to make that work. And then another thing, Bear sends you shims. And that right there, as you can see how the thing is shimmed up, yeah, well, that's what you got to do to make that work, so... I'm uh, I'm no pro at this. I uh, I've never done a disc brake conversion before, let alone build a muscle car before. So I'm still learning as I go. This has been a long project of mine, but to make sure that the profile of the caliper for the brake pads is good, you want to make sure you shim that out, and you're going to shim it from that side. That's how I was told to do it, and that's what we did. So this side's for the left. I won't be putting it on. I'm going to install this one and show you how that kind of goes together. So the kits that I got are the SS4 Plus 11 and 12 inch kit. So you're probably wondering why I have two different sizes, especially when the 11 inch is actually going on the front. Typically you want bigger rotors in the front and uh, smaller ones, or not necessarily smaller ones in the back, but it would, be, it would make more sense to have the larger rotors in the front. But the reason I had to go for 12s in the rear was because the, the 11 inch does not come with uh, an emergency brake and being that I'm manual swapping this car uh, I wanted an emergency brake so that was really my only option here so I ordered the 12s for the rear 11s for the front I got the proportioning valve and all that stuff for this kit so that should be uh, you know fairly easy to figure that out get the get the thing stopping the way I want it to but this kit is uh it's relatively bolt-on. There's a couple of things, like I'd mentioned before, that you should definitely look into if you're planning on doing this kit. But uh, let's slap her on and see what she looks like. All right, so I got the spindle on there, two bottom bolts, and the uh, ball joint up top. So now we're going to uh, throw the hub on. Oh, nice sound there. Psst. Snug. Move that for now. Get that rotor on there. Throw a couple of lug nuts on just to hold her snug. Now, 
bathroom in here. Burnt pipe going up there, eh? Hear it? So this is just going to be a quick short video. I just wanted to get something on YouTube because I know I haven't been posting much, but um, I'm going to get the wheel on there and make sure everything's set good with the preload on the bearing. And uh, then I'm going to have to, to get the rears done, I got to get the bearings pressed on. I don't have a press, my buddy does, so I'm going to go do that at his place and then I'll install those in another video, the rear ones. I also have to move the car over this way. I kind of wasn't really thinking um, when I was doing this because the uh, axle on that side will likely not come out due to the fact that it's too close to the wall. So I'm going to have to shift the whole car over. So I got to get it back on all fours. So I'll probably make a video doing this side here and then I'll shift the car over and continue working on it from there. But uh, hope you guys are all doing well and hope to bring you more content on this car soon. I kind of, I fell off the wagon and I wasn't really doing much with it, but uh, it's time to, time to get her done. So take her easy guys.